My dearly beloved in Christ, as you know, we're just a few days away from the very important season of Lent. And it is important for us to spend some time over the next few days thinking about what we will do to make a good Lent, what we will give up, what sacrifices we will make. But be sure to not only do some penance, to give up something you enjoy, make some sacrifices. In addition to that, we also should spend some extra time in reading, prayer, meditation, and especially to meditate on the passion of Christ, because that reminds us why we do penance. Why should we do penance during Lent? Well, there are many good reasons. First of all, our Lord said, unless you do penance, you shall perish. Because of fallen human nature, we need to do penance. And we do penance to atone for sin, to earn graces from God, to obtain favors, to prove our love for our Lord who suffered for us, but also by penance we subdue our fallen human nature. We are all very much aware of the battle of the spirit versus the flesh, of the sinful inclinations of our fallen human nature. By doing penance, we suppress those passions so that the spirit can thrive. And so, even in addition to atonement for sin, etc., we ought to do penance. The story is told of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. And St. Aloysius was a young Jesuit religious who died, I think, at the age of 24, before his ordination. He was a cleric preparing for the priesthood. And he ended up contracting disease because in charity, he volunteered to help the sick during a plague in Rome and contracted the disease himself and died from it. But the point I bring him up is because St. Aloysius was known in the seminary, in the monastery there in Rome, for his penance. And he also was known for having lived a very innocent, saintly life. And one of the fellow religious one day approached him and said, Aloysius, why do you do so much penance? Surely you don't have a great deal of sins to atone for. And he said, I am like a piece of bent iron that needs to be hammered into shape, thinking of like a blacksmith with a hammer and an anvil to straighten out a, a piece of bent iron. And of course, he was referring to his fallen human nature. So we all need to do penance. Let us be careful, number one, to observe the laws of the church during Lent in so far as they apply to us. But second, to take upon ourselves some additional penances for the love of our Lord. So this is a very important season, and it's important that we begin it well, right from the first day. Next Sunday, there will be distribution of ashes for those unable, which I presume is most of you, to receive them on Ash Wednesday. And those ashes remind us of death, but they also remind us of the need to do penance. Now, today we also observe the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. February 11th was the first day, the first apparition of Our Lady to St. Bernadette in 1858 in southern France. And it was very interesting because a little over three years before, on December 8th, 1854, Pope Pius IX had solemnly defined the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. And at Lourdes, Bernadette wanted to know Our Lady's name, and finally, after a number of apparitions, she gave her name as the Immaculate Conception. She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. So it was like a, a, our Blessed Mother showing approval and appreciation for the Pope, defining that as a dogma of our faith. But I would like to review briefly the events that took place at Lourdes. Bernadette, as you probably know, was from a very poor family. Her father had a difficult time getting work. 
Uh, she was somewhat illiterate. I don't know to what degree of education she had, but not very much. And she also was a sickly child. She had asthma. And she went out on that February morning in 1858 with her sister and a friend, these three girls, to gather sticks so that they could have a fire and warm themselves in their home. And their home was the old jail in Lourdes. And when she came to this area called the Masabiel, a grotto close to the river, that is when she saw our Blessed Mother. And the first apparition, Our Lady didn't say anything, but she saw this beautiful vision. And several days later, she saw Our Lady again. And she described her in detail as wearing a white dress with a blue sash, with gold roses on her feet. And in her hands, she held a rosary with white beads and a golden chain. And Our Lady smiled at her, and she again saw Our Lady for the second time. The third apparition was, I believe, a week after the first one, the 18th of February. I believe the first apparition, of course, the 11th, the second one, the 14th, and then the 18th, I believe, was the date of the third apparition. And at that apparition, Our Lady asked St. Bernadette to return to that place every day for two weeks in a row. Now, in the course of these two weeks, Our Lady continued to appear. The crowds began to gather and, and grow in size. And Our Lady did not say a great deal, such as we have at Fatima, the message of Our Lady at Fatima. But she did ask for penance, sacrifice, for the conversion of sinners. In fact, on one occasion, she told Bernadette, kiss the ground for poor sinners. If you can imagine a sacrifice like that. And in fact, at Lourdes, there is a plaque uh, marking that spot where Bernadette kissed the ground for sinners, and people will go up and kiss the ground at that spot. But Lourdes is best known for the miraculous spring of water. On one of those apparitions, Our Lady pointed to the ground and she said to Bernadette, drink from the spring. Bernadette looked at that spot and there was no spring there, so she started digging. And she dug down until there was a little bit of water at the bottom of this small hole that she dug. And she drank some of that muddy water. And people thought she was really out of her mind. But yet, that night, a miraculous spring came out from that little hole that she dug, and it amounted to something like, I don't remember the exact figure, something like 100,000 gallons of water per day that continued to flow continuously from that spring, that miraculous spring. And as you know, there began to be many miracles performed by people who bathed or drank of that miraculous water at Lourdes. Now, the apparition of Our Lady occurred in the middle of the 19th century at a time when due to various advances in science and medicine and so forth, there began to be a great deal of rationalism, of pride. People thinking, we don't need God. Look at how, look at all of our advances. And the common uh, what shall we say, uh, well-educated group looked down upon piety and religion as something for weak minds. They prided themselves on their superior intellects. And so here Our Lady came to confound the pride of man. And there began to be, once again, all of these miracles, so many miracles at Lourdes, hundreds and thousands of miracles, that the church authorities set up a medical board. And this board was made up of five to ten doctors, a number of them non-Catholics, even atheists, atheistic doctors. And unless they certified that a reported miracle 
could not have been explained by natural causes. It was not regarded by the church as a miracle. And for them to certify it, they had to have examined the invalid before the miracle occurred. So even with the stringent requirements of this medical bureau, there were hundreds and thousands of miracles that took place at Lourdes. And again, many, many, many more that were never even reported to this bureau. So it is a wonderful apparition of our Blessed Mother. And perhaps with Lourdes, the, the most striking aspect of it was the life of Bernadette herself. Look at how Our Lady chose her. She was from a family that was dirt poor. She was a sickly child. She had a difficulty learning her catechism so that her first communion was put off beyond the age of her fellow classmates or children her age were able to receive their first communion sooner. She was looked upon as being just a, you know, a poor child, not of the greatest intellect and so forth. And yet Our Lady chose her. But what did Our Lady say to St. Bernadette? She said, I promise to make you happy, not in this life, but in the next. And Bernadette did indeed suffer a great deal in this life. She suffered from those who doubted the truth of the apparitions, that she was just making this up, the ridicule, the scorn. But she also suffered tremendously physically. She contracted tuberculosis. She actually was anointed three different times, once in her youth, once shortly after she entered the convent, and then once shortly before she died. And each of the first two times, she recovered her health. But the mother superior testified that she suffered excruciating pain and yet tried to hide it from the other sisters in the convent. St. Bernadette, her body today, is incorrupt. It looks as fresh as if she were just lying there on the, on the bed inside the reliquary. There's a reliquary that's all surrounded by glass and it's just a beautiful testimony of her virtue. But again, remember those words of Our Lady, I do not promise you happiness in this life, but in the next. And God says the same thing to all of us. We can sometimes be tempted to envy those of the world who seem to have it all. They have wealth, they seem to have all the friends and, and uh, reputation and so forth, and all the fun, all of the material things. But that is not what we want. We want happiness in the next life. And in this life, we have our crosses to carry. We have our sorrows. We perform our penances, etc. So little Saint Bernadette teaches us to look forward to happiness in heaven, to carry our crosses here. And so maybe it's a good thing for us this year with an earlier Easter that the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes falls just before the beginning of Lent, a reminder of the need for penance. On one occasion during the apparition, Our Lady said three times to Bernadette, penitence, penitence, penitence. She asked for penance for sinners. We all need to do penance. So let us dedicate ourselves during this upcoming season of Lent to make a good Lent, to make some real sacrifices. Because as one good old priest used to say, if it doesn't hurt, it's not penance. Let us not just give up something easy that's no real sacrifice, but rather to do something that really costs us, and to do it especially for the right reason, and that is for the love of our Lord who died on the cross for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.